Hello Malaysia, apa khabar kamu orang? Yes, yes, yes! Selamat kembali to the Unity Show. I hope everyone is doing fine, staying safe, duduk rumah. Tak bergaduh sesama sendiri kat rumah tu. Malalah tahu kan Elaine ada orang bergaduh tersiapa masak dinner malam ni? I don't know. I don't know. I hope there are yang bergaduh. Elaine, how is KK? Um, it's uh, it, it has been raining here in Sabah for the past couple of days. And I do believe Sarawak and in the peninsula juga, seluruh yeah. Malaysia lah, are affected by the rain. A big thank you to those who jumped in and helped the victims of the flash flood. I do hope everyone is safe. Hmm? Yep, tapi kat Semenanjung sekarang ini dah tak hujan macam sebelum ni. At least uh, not as bad. Masih ada hujan. Pindah tu dia. Ah ya ya, tapi yes we had a very bad flood a few weeks ago. Yeah, I yeah. hope kawasan-kawasan yang mengalami banjir beransur pulih and to those people affected are coping well. Saya doakan semua pulih sedia kala secepat mungkin dan kehidupan kembali seperti biasa. That's true, Annie. I saw pictures and videos of the flood and it was devastating. And I live around an area that is always flooded. Oh. Especially kalau heavy hujan ke gitu. Confirm banjir. So, you know, it breaks my heart. But again, uh, we gotta help each other out. Kan gitu? Yes, betul. Elaine! Uh, Did you read about the latest backlash <laughs> article made by South China Morning Post? I did. I did. I... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bagai I cerita, I nak cerita, I nak cerita. Okay, okay, you go. <laughs> so apparently news tu tengah hot sekarang about a statement made by a Dutch designer. This Dutch designer owns Nala Design based yeah. in Bangsa. I read mm-hmm. the article and banyak benda I don't agree with, tapi I akan highlight satu je paragraph yang I rasa tak munasabah from the article. To quote her, my dream is to see the baju kurung return, to see Malays dressing beautifully again. I want people uh-huh. here to feel proud of their heritage. Growing mm-hmm. up, this country was full of beautiful fabrics and color. I'm on a crusade to make sure that doesn't disappear. Okay, Elaine, I nak kena, I nak kena explain it. Secara ringkas for our audience, dia nak orang Melayu pakai balik baju kurung dan orang Melayu kena bangga dengan budaya kita, Elaine. And dulu dia cakap masa dia membesar di Malaysia, dia tengok banyak fabric cantik, banyak fabric berwarna-warni And sekarang ni, dia on a mission untuk memastikan budaya baju koro kita tak hilang. Okay, I nak kena sambung, I nak kena sambung, I nak kena sambung ni. First of all, baju koro tu tak pergi mana, tak pernah hilang. Ada je orang pakai. Pi sekolah, pi kerja, pi masak pun orang kita pakai baju koro tu. So, I tak tahulah tang mana dia cakap baju koro kita tu hilang. Yang kedua... <laughs> Banyak nak cakap lah. <laughs> Yang kedua, dia cakap dulu was je fabric kita ni cantik and warna-warni. Dah tu sekarang, kain batik kita, kain songket kita warna hitam putih ke? Dia tak no. nampak ke warna-warna tak seterang? Ya. Yeah. Dia tak Wrong. nampak ke warna-warna seterang matahari dekat kain batik, kain songket <laughs> ah, dia? Betul. Tu. betul. Ya, yeah, dengan suturanya, dengan songketnya, dengan batiknya. Tang mana pula warna kain tu hilang. And point terakhir untuk malam ini, dia cakap dia on a crusade. Bermaksud dia dalam misi untuk menyelamatkan budaya baju kurung kita ni tak nak hilang. Padahal bersepah je orang kita pakai baju kurung ni. Yeah. Misi apa tak tahulah. Tapi lah Hilin, poin yang paling penting saya nak cakap, I am so amazed by how united the Malaysians are defending our culture. It shows we still care and proud of our culture and heritage. Mungkin kita jarang bercakap mengenai topik ni but it's in us. This is the unit yeah. that we always talk about on the show. Itu je lah Cik nak cakap. Okay, next. <laughs> At least it's an international recognition from Malaysia. But yeah. she probably could have uh, promoted her collection better. It's uh, understandable for Rocket Malaysia lah to be angry, kan? Yeah, but, it's like Elaine. I hope she learns from all of this. Yeah, but either way, kita bersabar saja lah dulu. <laughs> Anyways, here's a reminder of who we are. The Unity Show is a spin-off from the recent Unity movement that strives to unite the nation through the interests of our generation. Regardless of political ideology, race, or religion, lah, huh? our mission is to come together as one and to spread hope, not hate. Unity, not division. Yeah. Unity is what makes Malaysia exactly. strong. Exactly. So keep the faith. Spread that faith. Yeah. <laughs> Sebelum kita go on a break, our special guest for tonight is a very beautiful mom. Dia juga adalah timbalan ketua Wirawarti Party Warisan. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
back ladies and gentlemen it is the MCO indeed dan juga darurat lagi pretty sure there are a lot of young parents out there during this trying times yeah. our special guest for tonight is a new mom herself who also has been featured on the show before it's good to have her back ladies and gentlemen join our ramp hi Joe. welcome to the show hi We're good, we're good. I hope Ain is good. <laughs> She's uh she looks happy. <laughs> I love babies. So cute. <laughs> How are you, Joe? I'm good, good. Thanks. Yeah. Think baby How's baby Danielle? Danielle? How's motherhood so far? Uh, dealing with crying all the time. <laughs> okay. Is it her be- bedtime oh, already? Okay, oh, bye bye. Okay. Good night. Are you well? <laughs> So, I'm with your girls now. Uh, <laughs> how's motherhood so far? Well, it's rather challenging, but it's really fun. You know, every day is it's always something new with the baby. You know, um, I've just yeah. just turning four months in two days time. So you know, every kind, you're a mumsa. Yeah. So like even if in in their characters they're feeding you know patterns it just changes like every one two weeks like line like it, last two weeks she's like she didn't really like to drink susu two weeks after that she's like a milk guzzler now so you know it's 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 challenging but it's fun motherhood <laughs> kan ada uh, jo apa tu ada juga orang kata babies every week no bukan every week every day pun rupa baby pun bertukar tukar hari ni rupa par- uh, rupa mak besok rupa ayah dia Uh, I think as for now, I don't know lah macam mana rupa si Daniel ni. <laughs> um, obviously, when, I mean, you know, when people, my friends, uh, you know, see her. I mean, we haven't really managed to see a lot of, you know, my friends because yeah. of EMCO and then yeah. COVID. Uh, yeah. But then when I try to, you know, we have FaceTime with my friends or whatever, they'll be like, eh, muka bapak dia. Like, how do you want to see... Joanna punya husband punya muka macam muka anak dia. Hmm. But but they do say that like if your first uh, born is a girl, uh, she will always have the dad's look and then if your second is a boy, the boy will have uh, the Follow mother's the look. Ha-ha. Well, I don't know about that, tapi kalau orang cakap lah if if the daughter looks like the dad then dia bilang rezeki dia sejuk. Ah, ya, yeah. yeah, betul, 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 betul. Semenanjung, uh, I don't know about the rest of Semenanjung lah, tapi in Kelantan, dia orang cakap macam tu. Dia kata kalau rupa anak perempuan, ikut muka bapa, dia akan sejuk, dengar cakap, lembut. I ikut, oh, muka, that's good. I ikut muka bapa tau, so I <coughs> hint, hint. <laughs> Daniel begitu. And then and then they say, right, if like macam the boy looks like the father, the the son, kan? Dia kena pakai anting-anting on the left side. I mean that is what we you know in the in the Dusun culture you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. So okay. Jo. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Selai <laughs> sih. Pegang telinga. <laughs> Baca kapas baby can go on and on and on. Okay. So selain sibuk menguruskan baby Daniel, hmm. what have you been up to? Ada new projects ke new uh, uh, initiatives yang tengah berlangsung sekarang on your end? Well, for now, you know, like restrictions, you know, mm-hmm. we cannot go so far, only 10 kilometers away from where you live, mm-hmm. for example, you know, and of course, all the other restrictions of any participation in on any organization, obviously, you know, yeah. that has not, that I have not been doing much in terms of, you know, physically going out there, but um What is interesting about the second MCO, MCO 2.0, is that, you know, I mean, you have to see, I mean, it, it depends to the individual itself, whether you want to see it positively or negatively. True. Right? Like, positively, what I have I gained from, you know, this MCO 2.0 is that, you know, it gives me more time, quality time, of course, with my family. Mm, mm, mm. It gives me more time to work out. <laughs> to try to get back into <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, but then again, you know, it also gives me time to reflect, you know, all the things that, you know, has happened before this, um, especially in my career, for example. And then it also gave me a lot of time to read about current affairs, 
you see. Yeah. Like, um, but then if you look at it negatively, like, oh my gosh, you know, we are cooped up inside a, a, a house, yeah. we can't do anything. I mean, of course, you know, that'll be so stressful. So it really depends how you look at it, lah, for me. Mm, 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 mm. So I've been reading quite a lot. And, you know, I think there are a lot of things that I've read so far, especially on, on government policies, yeah. politics whatsoever. And, and it's interesting to see that there are many loopholes in the government mm. uh, policies. Mm. For example, like uh, Budak Budak OKU, yeah? yeah. People with disabilities, for example. Um, the creative industry, you know? Mm. Yeah. There's like, um, there's so many room for improvement, you know, for, for this creative industry. Uh, and other, and you know, other things as well. You know, even constitutionally, learning about emergency. Yeah. You know, like the last yeah. time it happened was 1969, right? <laughs> and then now it happened again. So it's yeah. very interesting to see, like, oh, how is this emergency constitutionally whatsoever? So yeah, that is so much what I've done lah, so far. Wow, that sounds a lot considering you know you have a new baby as well. And then the fact that tadi you mentioned about, you know, macam every week, perangai baby berubah-rubah, ragam dia bertukar-tukar. You know, it sounds tiring. The fact that, you know, Joe perlu bahagikan masa untuk kerja, untuk, you know, to do all this reading and melayan kerenah anak kecil. Because, you know, at this age, they really need our full attention. Like, full on, full attention. So, how do you do it? How do you divide time? Well, I think, you know, um, so I have this system. I mean, before having a baby, you know, I always like, you know, I mean, I do have my time, you know, schedules, timetable, things like that. But, you know, it's, I, I was pretty lenient before this, but now it's like, okay, now you have a baby. So you have another responsibility, you see. True. Um, yeah. So I have to set my time, like every six o'clock, I have to wake up, you know, and, and yeah. she normally wakes up at about, what, 7, 7.30. And mm. you know, I have to do all my workouts, all the important things of the day, like early in the morning, for example. And then I have to attend to my baby. And then right after that, you know, uh, when she goes, you know, when she naps, like like she's about to go to nap now, you know, having her nap, or have to go to sleep. Um, and then that yeah. is the time where I really, you know, make use of the time to read whatever's happening. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you keep a schedule lah, and you follow strictly schedule to you try and ikut lah. Exactly. I try. Walaupun. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, at least you try. <laughs> Joe, earlier you mentioned about creative industry. Yeah. So uh, before politics, you were in the creative industry yourself. So in your opinion, how big has the creative industry developed from then compared to today? Wow. <laughs> I know I'm known to be, but between, uh, compared to me and Aini, I'm known to be the, the host yang just bullet a question to people. <laughs> I'm known as that already, so I don't mind. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, soalan tembak terus lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She uh, went straight in. Yeah. Okay, let's get down into business, girl. Yeah, let's get down to business. Uh, um, okay. How is it different creative industry before and how is it now? Like, okay, yes, I was in the creative industry before, i.e. I was um, a singer lah before, okay? Um, I started singing at a very young age. Uh, I mean, in fact, singing is also in the family. My mom had, you know, uh, she was a Dusun uh, singer last time <laughs> at the day in, in RTM. So, and then my uncles and uh, they're all musicians. Um, a lot of my cousins are also, you know, uh, local artists here in Sabah. Mm. Um, so uh, I got that, you know, um, creative blood lah, Corona. Yeah. In me. Uh-uh. So I started singing at about four, four years old, I think four or five. My first performance that I actually remembered was when I was in kindergarten. Yeah, my mom was playing wow. the game. Okay. I still have the picture. Um, and then after that, uh, I started singing back. Oh no, I actually made my first song. I compose. I compose songs too. Wow! Uh, so I compose. What can she not do, guys? No <laughs> lah. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, you know, it's it's actually a stress relief. You know, when you actually do singing and composing songs because you express all your emotions. Emotions. Yeah. yeah. Very, you know, artistic person. So, and then I started off 
composing songs at the age of 14. And my first song that I composed, no, I was 13 actually, um, is Koku Sanku. It's a oh. Dusan song lah. Okay. Right. And then um, after Form 5, I joined, well, I uh, I actually joined Lembaga Kebudayaan Negeri Sabah, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. To, to you know, to, to sing, you know. And to yeah. Play. And then in 2009, I joined Bintang RTM. <laughs> this one I know. <laughs> wow! Bintang RTM. Uh, <laughs> right. And I was, uh, my batch was with this, uh, siapa ini? Uh, er- Ernie Zakri. Okay. Yeah, she's okay. Now, yeah, she's one of the Malaysian artists now, lah, you know. Okay. Uh, she's not uh, number one. She's first place and I got first runner up. So number two lah. Oh, okay. And then I started singing. I took, uh, you know, singing quite seriously. But I was studying at the same time. So I was studying my law first degree in, in, uh, in the UK, in, right? No, 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 no. Oh, in, belum lagi. No, because I did the La- University of London external program. So I'm a law graduate. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So when when I was doing that, then I was also performing and singing at the same time. You know, you get extra income. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah and then um i was attached to some of the um music uh you know um composers um i still remember i was with ajay before right oh uh, wow yeah, i tried to legend oh. eh yeah. <laughs> ajay i i sang some of his songs um i also had uh also, Ani, I, I was um, pernah dilamar oleh KRU at that time, <laughs> but you oh, know, yeah, that's big. Those were the days, lah. You know, yeah, uh, sama-sama juga. Lah. Yeah, and then I was also contracted under Nova Music production. Oh. Yeah, so I was. Was singing. it e- was it easy for you to learn all these, yeah. you know, to get recognized from all these big uh, productions? Right, but but then you know, Bintang RTM was a platform for me, you know, and it opened doors. And at the same time, you know, I was with. Uh, I, I mean, I do I don't really like to you know ulang balik the history. Uh-huh. But also, you know, I won Undok Ngadau in two thousand seven. So it actually <laughs> like I need no big deal, but she won Undok yeah. Ngadau. She is like, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yeah, like, like I'm a law degree. Hashtag, humble, hashtag but, but then, you know, bless, you know. <laughs> but, but I won. Yeah, I, I won. <laughs> so yeah. So I mean, for me, being in the creative industry, I've I had quite an uh, you know quite an experience in it. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and how it had evolved from my time until now. I mean, now even in music, you have like you know synthesizers, for example, and then you have music engineers. You have. True. You know, I um, you know, you know, like your 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 apa ni, you punya music video clips and everything has like <laughs> yeah. it's not the same like how it was before. Like last time, gan like okay, kita ambil uh, uh, orang di tengah tengah padang, for example, oh, kan? Yeah. Orang kan like CGI, everything green. Yeah. But you know, technology has evolved. So yeah. the creative industry in Malaysia, I think, you know, has evolved evolved a lot. But you know, as I I said earlier, you know. I had mm. taken, you know, the time to read about creative industry, how the creative industry in Malaysia, we can reimagine it. You know, there's a lot of room of improvement. True. I think the first thing we need to address is the issues in hand when it comes to creative industries in Malaysia. Mm. Maybe I think, you know, I would like to share with you girls and of course mm. our listeners tonight mm-hmm. of what, you know, what I have uh, research and of course look into and experience it myself mm. number one i think the issue is that you know the definition of creative industry in malaysia is so vague you know like that's true yeah. i agree is cre- what is creative true you know? like mm. design music publishing yeah. film, video what about you know automatic or uh, automotive you know robotics gaming you know, mm. uh, what about makeup? You know, industry, for example. True. I mean, I like makeup so so lah. So you know, <laughs> I look into these things. So you know, defining the word creative economy is also already a challenge. 
yeah. right? What about architecture, advertising, culinary arts, you know? Now, the next thing we have to look into, the next question is that, you know, what agency or ministry uh, should govern uh, these sectors, you see? Mm. Um, so, <clears throat> for example, I give you a, an example, okay? Now, the Dasar Industry Creative Negara, DIP, mm. Okay, who overlooks on creative industry is at the KKMM, a communication ministry, right? Okay. So it was just only one ministry that looks into it. Right? So yeah. subsequent to the general election in 2013, the ministry was split into two. Mm. As a result of that, you know, the industry was split into two where fine arts, performing arts and crafts, yeah, were mm. under MOTAC. Okay, MOTAC okay. is of tourism okay okay and the remaining you know uh that has digital inclination you know filming tv music you uh, know whatnot that is under communications right so sudah dua berbeza di sana kan yeah the next one is intellectual property and royalties among mm. all the talents right if you want to create something you know you'll be creative uh, by say for example lah, you bought handphone, kan? Uh, yeah. So you need to have you know registered and you know, dapat punya intellectual property lah, kan? In fact, even yeah. you know, uh, singers, yeah. right? They make songs. They they, they compose yeah. songs. Royalty. They have royalties. Yeah. But but do you know that that is in another commentary? Oh. Yes, it's under KPDN HEP, Kementerian oh. Perdagangan Dalam Negeri dan Negeri. Dan hal eh wal pengguna. That's another one again. Oh, kan? <laughs> yeah, they yeah, they're scattered. Ah, and then, they're they're just scattered like all over. Yeah. Ah, so and happen under one wing, macam like one wing satu je macam tu. Exactly, which is why you know, and and then you know you have like uh, a friend of mine who has been very passionate in you know in the creative industry where she's also you know highly involved in in the agency called Magic. It's the mm, Malay yeah, culture. magic, uh huh, right. But that is under Mosti. That's another, you know. Yeah, that's another up uh, to <laughs> body. Yeah, it's a difference. It's a separate one, but Yeah. Comes to allocation and grants in itself towards the creative industry, it's mm. already scattered, but you know. Mm-hmm. Ah, so I like what you said just now, Aini. Like it has to be under one umbrella. So yeah. Like and then another issue that we have to you know look into is how this you know creative talents want to start you know to start up lah. okay capital yeah. is an issue capital injection is an issue yeah this one is a lot of our special i mean our our creative talent sampur right mm. like for example um you know they want to have a startup company right yeah. creative industry of course you know it's the the nature of the the business is very uh, and intangible. Like you yes, can yes, can. Yeah, betul, 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 betul. Tak stable. Tak, it, it's not people. People assume the stigma. Not promising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And and I have read this. You know, quite a very interesting article where they said that intellectual property. You know, you can actually uh, value intellectual properties. Mm-hmm. Right. But because, you know, IP is like, I quote and unquote, astronomical, they said. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these banks, all right, or in fact, investors are reluctant to, you know, grant their loans because yeah. of the nature itself. So yeah. it's an epitome of high risk business, you know. So a lot of our young talents, they sound good, you know, like, oh, you know, how, how I mean, you know, if you want to start something, Money is very important to start up, ma. Yeah. Right? Yes. So, kalau you don't have that support, the economic support from the start, how do you want to encourage a lot of our talents to really like yeah. step, step up, step yeah. up? You know, you know, broaden their horizon. Mm-hmm. So these things that I think, you know, these are the two. Uh, is it two? Oh, yeah, two. Right. <laughs> two. Uh, in fact, three. Uh, defining uh, creative industry. Mm. Agency that's governing, and as yeah. well, capital. You know, these three things. I think it's 
is uh, orang close together. Dia perlukan uh, satu sama lain bersangkut paut. Bersangkut paut for this creative industry to even move forward here in in. So? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's really true because uh, I'm pretty sure the three of us we have so many friends who are in the the again creative industry vague. Apa apa jelah like <laughs> in whatever field that they're they're in. It's uh it's challenging. Like what you said, it's scattered. So <laughs> when you mention that, it it's like you kind of know that it's scattered, but to the to the amount of berapa banyak cabang that we have yeah. to go through to get you know recognition ka or approval ka or being accepted in one's uh, um what feel so it's it's uh frustrating it's really frustrating but yeah. um at the same time there are also talents like our talents in malaysia to you know um where they had to fly abroad to yeah. live abroad and maybe at the same time uh you know study and do music or whatever it is that they are passionate about and then for some reason they achieve their dreams away from home away from malaysia and then oh. you know they get the name there they get yeah. respected there come home then our people you know like oh, hello yeah yeah uh, yeah baru kita di thank you for um, you know yeah acknowledging uh, malaysia and um, you know so it's um, also again frustrating and how long do we need to continue seeking the support that we need that exactly. these talents need from other countries just to be accepted by our our own blah, blah, our own people i know i mean yeah, like, i'm so frustrated sampai lagi sasul oh. every episode sasul no but elaine like you see like we have lots of talents you know like yuna for example you know oh yeah collaborating mm. with asha like hello asha yeah. <laughs> um and then you have michelle yo for example yeah. and then in fact in the fashion industry i mean you have jimmy choose you know like yeah. Yeah. hollywood celebrities have jimmy choose on their feet <laughs> true i I'm mean building. is this brain drain you know <laughs> but I, I honestly think that I mean, in terms of the contribution of uh, um, this creative industry, economic contribution to the national GDP, it's very, very small. It's only 1.9 percent, and there's a lot of you know uh, uh, catch up we need to do. Like for example, in 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 Indonesia, you know, yeah. they contribute the the creative industry itself con- uh, contributes five to seven percent. So that's like besar, you know. But in Malaysia, I personally think that you know there is a lot of improvement, you know, a room of uh, you know room for improvement for the creative industry in Malaysia lah as a whole. But then again, you know, it does not work in silo way. Oh, you only have the government to like create policies and things like that, but. It also needs to have a symbiotic relationship as well uh, mm. with the people. I mean, yeah. we as well have to support our local talent. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Audrey, you're wearing a you know baju you know inspired karazan. Yeah. Did you call me Audrey? <laughs> you know, I know this is an artisan made locally made. Okay, ladies and gentlemen from oh. KK. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, like, cool. it's true. Support. You support. Yeah. Bila kita cakap pasal support, we always talk, we, you know kita selalu cakap oh government kena support, government kena support tapi rakyat lupa support kadang kita sebagai rakyat pun kena support kita punya talent, yeah. kita punya artis. People are forgetting that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they say be kind to one another, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, you know, this this conversation about creative industry is so open ended like I think tomorrow yeah. Habis ini kita bercakap, but after MCO, we the three of us should, should really get together and like <laughs> you know list down all of this. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Joe, I know that apa tu? Uh. Joe also berhimat di dalam politik. Uh. You know, I I think it's a good idea to have more women in politics, not just for the sake of diversity, tapi you know to be able to introduce new perspectives. In implementing new policies, what you said, you know how you're going to implement, you know, new policies, new ideas in the creative industry. Yeah. Susah tak? I mean, do you deal with a lot of haters? You know, mesti banyak orang skeptical dengan kebolehan wanita, not just in politics, but also dalam kerjaya in general. Okay, um, I think if you talk about hatreds uh, towards <laughs> women in politics, I don't think it only is 
only it happens to women, but it also happens to both genders, men and women. <laughs> you know, it's not only about women, but but um, I would have to agree that being a woman, you are scrutinized a bit more rather than your male counterparts. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, the way you dress, uh, yeah. uh, the way you, you know, uh, um, show yourself to the public, you know, yeah. you are more exposed to public scrutiny as opposed to uh, men, because men, you just wear what? Luar and baju, that's baju. it. Cukup dah, cukup. Cool. Tak apa ya, nothing dah. Ah, like women, for example, you know, like, um, you know, you, you, skirt, kalau macam skirt ada naik sikit dari... Naik sikit, ya, yeah, ya, yeah. orang nampak, oh, dia pakai skirt di atas sikit hari ni. Ah, uh, you know, and then like, like baju, for example, it's not only politicians, but I think, you know, any other, you know, women in, 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 in the, in, in, in cool, yang berjaya lah, influencers lah, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, YouTube influencers, for example, mm-hmm. you know, everything, you know, it's, it's, Women, they really have, you know, like, people always like, think, oh, apa baju dia pakai? Ui, merahnya lipstick, you yeah, know? Ya, betul! <laughs> like, like, even, like, if you pakai chart kuku and whatsoever, like, why are you wearing so red? You nampak kan, all these little things. Yeah, like, but men, like, kau panjang sideburn sikit pun, like, ah, nobody actually talks about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, betul, betul, betul. Uh, so, and then what's luar you pakai skinny jeans ke whatsoever pun macam yeah. You know, but when yeah. you pakai skinny jeans, woy nampak po, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so how do you deal with that? How do you, how, how do you macam, you know, macam tempias je bila benda-benda tu datang? Gosh. You know, sometimes like if I want to like really, I, I don't want to see these things. Then like I, I isolate myself like from social media for that for, for one or two days for example and and I'm quite lucky because you know I have friends uh, support system um, you know not only in, in politics but also outside of politics yeah um, you know I have my family who is really supportive as well um, and my husband also is, is very very supportive and I'm so lucky to have a husband who really like the <laughs> pool. So like you know being in politics, you know, you come up with they, they come up with you know like some stories or gossips yeah. or like that. Uh-uh. But, you know, I think uh, for a woman uh, for a woman being in politics, you uh-huh. really also have to have a husband that really supports and understands the nature of you know, that's true, I agree. Politics. Betul. Yeah, to have a strong support system is every is very important, especially for us women. Kita kan very, you know, sensitive in nature. As yeah. much as that's hard to swallow, but <laughs> kita very sensitive. <laughs> okay, Jo. Uh, okay, one last question before we let you go. Um, okay. I okay, I have to tell you this. I have to tell you this about when I found out about you. When I saw you uh, on the news and in, in the newspaper, I terus macam, oh my god, siapa perempuan ni? Cantik ya perempuan ni. Kenapa I tak cantik macam dia? Dah lah, we're the same age, you know? So, kita kan ada stigma di kalangan masyarakat kita yang, you know, hari ini bila masyarakat kau tengok kita, kalau perempuan cantik kan, yang macam, ala dia boleh lah, dia cantik, dia cantik. So, boleh lah. You know, yeah. So, again, how do you break away from that? You know, what sort of impact that you had to make in order for people to take you seriously? <laughs> you know, rather than orang tengok, oh, you know, she's just a face. Oh, she's just a pretty face. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you know me personally, I'm actually a very pumalu person. So the moment you actually talk about that, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. already, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, this reminds me of a poem by Shakespeare. You know, uh-huh. it's eighteen. Um, I used to read that when I was in Form 1 and it goes, shall I compare thee to a summer's day, you know, and oh. yeah, and she, he, you know. The, I guess I ingat poem ni, dalam uh, buku <laughs> uh, And, you know, I think, let me just recall, but thy, uh, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. I think that's one part of the, you know, uh, the, the the sonnet. But what basically the sonnet says that, you know, beauty is like summer. Like, it's only during the summer they chantik. Tetapi, you know, what is most important thing is like the beauty inside of, of, of you know, the, the, the person, the poet 
is trying to say lah to the person. Okay. Uh, so for me uh, personally, I think you know having a so-called blessed <laughs> appearance, yeah. I think it's a blessing. But I don't use. I don't think. And in fact, I would not use that as a leverage. Mm. But I think for me personally, is that you know to be in politics or in whatever career that you have. Uh, your appearance is a bonus. That's a gift from God. So of course you have to be you know, grateful about that. But remember, your punya muka tidak akan you know remain like that. By about forty fifty years old, kudut kudut sudah keluar. Yeah. So what is most important thing is the beauty inside, right? And and as well as you know, uh, niat, okay, niat di hati untuk melakukan sesuatu. What is your call? You know, uh, what is your calling, and how do you actually, you know, uh, move towards your calling, and, yeah. and you know, and and really focus on what you're passionate about. So I think for me personally, just don't look at the face. Okay, I, that's maybe a bonus, but what's yeah. important thing is itu dalam dia mesti bersila. Cakap saya bersila tidak lah bukan. Oh, the the niat dia, uh, the focus niat dia tu kena betul. Yeah. Betul. Uh, so Joe, ini <laughs> memandangkan this is a unity show. It's about unite, uniting people together. Uh, mungkin Joe ada teman-teman yang masih mencari-cari. Uh, teman-teman di Sabah manalah tahu ada orang kat Sabah tu mencari-cari <laughs> boleh Joe introduce dengan Cik Mek Klaten ni manalah tahu ini <laughs> 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 actually ya di Sabah ni banyak etnik yang ada di Sabah okey oh. ada Jau, ada kadazan dusun murut semualah banyak dia punya etnik dan sub etnik di sini kan <laughs> So, bagi. Kalau bilang ada, you know, ada hati lah untuk mencari jodoh di Sabah ini dan Cemek dan Kelantan nak ni nak disatukan. Saya <laughs> rasa tak ada masalah kan kalau Gunung Kinabalu disatukan dengan pesisiran pantai Kelantan. <laughs> Why dia not? bagi kau Aini dia. <laughs> lagi lagi Aini, you you so beautiful, you know. You're, you're such, you know, such a fun, you know, girl to be with. Ah, definitely, but blushy, I blushy, I da blush, I da blush. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay, guys. I'm okay. I'm single too. Uh, it's fine. Elaine. Yeah, Elaine, Elaine too. Yeah, Elaine. Yeah. I'm good. Hi, Elaine. But sana dia pi lah tayus ni. Aku tak kira. Ayah pun ada bantuan. Elaine mau cari jodoh. Belum lagi, belum ready. I'll take my time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> But baru tahu Aini dia bagi kau banyak option lah. You tanya satu dia bagi kau banyak. <laughs> In your face. But Jo, unfortunately I have to cut you off there before Aini ask you another ridiculous question. But um we learn a lot from you today tonight truly uh we understand what you want to fight for for the creative scene. But um I guess we'll speak to you in a bit. Yeah. Right. Terima kasih Jo. Terima kasih banyak-banyak for coming on the show. Kita jumpa lagi. Bye. In a bit. <laughs> Semalam I call you, you ta answer. You kata you keluar pergi dinner. You kata you keluar dengan kawan you. But when I called Tommy, he said it wasn't true. So I drove my car pergi daman. Sara, Tommy kata maybe you tengok bola Tapi bila I sampai you, you tak ada lagi lah I jadi gila So I called and called sampai you answer You kata sorry sayang tadi tak dengar My phone was on silent, I was at the gym Lata belakang suara perempuan lain Sudahlah sayang I don't believe you've always known That your words were never true Why am I with you? I pun tak tahu No wonder lah my friends pun tak suka you 
So I guess that's the end of our story. I hit got the she accepted his apology. Tapi last night kita dapat tahu she was cheating too with her ex boyfriend's best friend. Tommy. Semua selamat kembali menonton segmen kedua of the Unity Show. Pada malam ini kita ada seorang penyanyi yang sangat comel, yang sangat sinonim di bibir kita suatu ketika dulu. Pernah dilamar oleh record label yang menetap di Los Angeles, California dan pernah menghasilkan lagu yang menjadi kegilaan ramai bertajuk Kantoi. Please give a round of applause for ZRB. I love that round of applause. <laughs> Hello, apa kabar? Hi, apa kabar? Kabar baik. How are you? Bagus. I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm mm-hmm. I'm you know just coping like everybody else. <laughs> like to be honest, yeah. <laughs> but I keeping really good spirits. This is Aini. That's Aini. Aini. Uh, Wo Aini. Chia <laughs> Puchoa. Wo Aini. <laughs> You know what? Funny thing is, that's okay. actually my pickup line whenever um, I'm out. Kakak dah macam, oh, my guys. Oh, my so do you have a time? Do you have a time? Good. So, uh, nanti lah PM tepi. <laughs> the af- after party, je lagi. Yeah, after party kerja lagi. <laughs> so Z, selamat datang to the show. How are you? How have you been? Z sekarang berada di mana? Di uh, Kuala Lumpur. Oh, kalau lumpur, sama lah kita. Yes, itulah dia. Keep safe, stay negative. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's yes. like the only yes. time. This the only time where you can say stay yes. negative. Stay, stay negative, guys. Stay yeah. negative. <laughs> stay negative, guys. <laughs> okay, saya pasti ramai yang sedang menonton show pada malam ini tertanya-tanya jika Z akan mengeluarkan lagu baru. So please share with our audience tonight what you've been up to other than doing live shows on your Instagram. <laughs> I watch Actually, live shows, okay? <laughs> oh, do you? Actually, I've been on like uh, TikTok live a lot. Oh, I love TikTok. I love TikTok. TikTok, I love TikTok. Is- um, so, buat masa sekarang ni, saya seperti, you know, um, kawan-kawan saya yang lain di dalam bidang industri, uh, di dalam bidang music and industry yeah. music. Um, kita orang pun, of course, merasa macam banyak halangan. Uh, oh. Especially sebab dalam kita punya kerjaya, kita harus berdepan and you know bertukaran uh, energy orang cakap dengan so? um, you know our audiences so i'm still trying to get used to um, performing in front of a camera tapi macam kita tak nampak oh, senyuman uh, sorakan nyanyian dendangan alunan dan semuanya daripada oh. uh, kita punya audience tapi you know alangkah tetapi that is the reality right now but yeah. we just have to sort of get used to it And um, I like staying home. Um, Me too. You know, actually, like not because I am able to, but because I, I, I actually do like staying home. Yeah. I love going out. I use the thing is, I, I like staying home, but I like having the option to go out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, sama, yeah, sama. For sure. You know, unfortunately. Uh, tapi I just not check up. Unfortunately, yes, kita faham that some people have to be out there. Yeah. Um, to work, they have to go to the offices to work. Um, you know, everybody has a different way of uh, finding their period nasi. Um, you know, and I feel for them as well mm-hmm. because you know, uh, people have different ways of uh, trying to cope and survive. Um, and I just wish that uh, to all the people that has to that have to go outside and you know have to cari makan outside. I wish you nothing but protection and safety. Um, Amin. Yeah, and all the He's blessings so for you and your loved ones. So. I know. so sweet. <laughs> the good things released last March. Was that right? Last March, and I'm so curious to know about what inspired you to write that song because it's so simple. I mean, it's so simple yet so full of life, and yeah. it's enough to catch whoever is listening to pause and you have that ability z to turn things around for someone to be on present time it's for me it's extraordinary and um yeah. 
I just want to know how do you feel when someone come up to you and say, Z, your song helped me reflect on my life and it gave me hope again. Because when I listened to it, it just went on and on, repeat on repeat on repeat. And and I felt that you, it's like you you wrote this song for me. And for me, that's a, a personal You're going to make feeling. me cry. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's true because I teared up listening to it. It's so, I love how it's so simple yet. It's just, it's enough because yeah. it's everything you need. But the... Thank you. F- uh, thank you so much for your kind words, really. <laughs> I cannot, I'm, I'm very, I'm very sensitive. Yeah. I'm really about no. to tear up. But thank you so much because um, to me as a songwriter, you know, everything that you just said. Um, brings so much meaning, like that much more meaning um, and reward personally um, as a writer uh, because uh, in the end of the day, that's what you want for your art to make people feel, at least for me. Um, art comes in many ways, of course. Like, that's true. You can create art that evokes many different emotions and memories. Um, to me, I, <laughs> I don't know, I'm a very nostalgic person. That's my favorite emotion. Um, so I try to capture uh, a sense of timelessness um, as much as I can. Although, you know, I let the songs write themselves most of the times. But um, for good things uh, in particular, uh, I actually wrote this song with my friend uh, David Hurwitz, who yeah. goes by David Strange now, uh, who is a songwriter based out of New York. Um, and he used to be in my band, so he was like my compadre, la, my musical mm-hmm. partner. Um, and he's also a very prolific uh, poet, actually. So um, one day uh, he was visiting LA, and we hung out. And he's like, "Oh, Mama Z, I have um, like some poems I wrote recently. I want you to take a look at them." And then I was like, "Okay." And so we went through some of his work, and I said, "This one. What's this one? I like this one." And Ooh. I'm like, "But it has 11 verses." <laughs> <laughs> ah. I'm like there's 11 stanzas uh, kalau, <laughs> you know uh, poet uh, apa? reference kan? poet, poet, poet terms um, I was like okay we gotta cut down um, some of the fats like it's it was very it was very challenging to do because like each and every single one of the stanzas were very beautifully written uh, simple um, straight to the point mm. um, and then I said okay like do you have any ideas for melodies for it and then he sang, and then I'm like, okay, um, can, may I step in and, you know, like, reharm everything? Um, so this actually was in 2014. Wow, okay. Yes, this was written in 2014, um, but I only had the rezeki yeah. um, to get it uh, recorded because I am an independent artist. So uh, what a lot of people don't know is that you got to have yeah. funding. funding. <laughs> you have to get your finances straight before you create, yeah. you know. Oh, that's good, actually. I know. <laughs> get your finances straight before you create. <laughs> yeah, okay, 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 okay. Um, hashtag. Um, <laughs> um, so you know, finally, I uh, I gathered enough funds to work with a producer that I really liked for it, uh, who's Andre Santana, who also played in my band. Um, but he's produced um, Herb Alpert, uh, Ziggy Marley, um, and uh, uh, Sergio Mendes. Um, and yeah, so he is also very, uh, I love his style. I love his style. It's very uh, authentic, very organic. Um, his, his studio has still has instruments <laughs> and not just like 88 keys, which is fine too. But sometimes, you know, instruments, different feel. Yeah. So I finally got to work with him and then we finally recorded this song in 20, I want to say 2017. Um, and... Um, push come to shove Jay. I don't know if that's actually the right term but um, anyway wow, it's okay. you make uh, long story <laughs> longer <laughs> um, I finally uh, got it recorded um, and then it wasn't until 2018 where I was like I need this song to be out 2018 yeah. uh, 2018 yeah. um, and then I was like okay I, I want this song to be shared organically so I didn't do any press conference for it or anything like that Um, I shot the video in Joho Mm -hmm. um, with a very small crew like one camera Um, uh, my friend co-directed it we directed it together 
um, and we had like one editor, and then the rest was history. Uh, but then um, the pandemic started surfacing, um, yeah. and I was like, it you know, I was like, I think like something big is gonna happen with this thing, so I really want to release it like soon, soon, soon. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like okay, much like, pandemic happened. Like, it uh-huh. just so happened that it came out during a time where. Um, I think like personally for me I was like I feel like this song is medicine to me yeah. and I feel like I really want to share that um, so yeah so again I didn't uh, I just put it up on YouTube and then just relied on like uh, reposts um, and people sharing it organically because that's my background I used yeah. to you know be Coco Kaina and like mm-hmm. just relied on people liking yeah. and sharing um, but you know uh, apparently, like the power of sharing still worked. Um, yeah, it does. Surprisingly, kan, macam power yeah. sharing. Orang kata, when it comes to power sharing, too, it works best. It was better daripada kalau kita bayar macam at Facebook ads or anything. I think the most important thing as well is that I wasn't looking, I wasn't pushing for numbers. Mm. Um, and mm. I think, like, especially in this time, in you know, in this age, like a lot of the things that people post up like they have expectations like we, of course me too sometimes you know yeah. which I'm like oh this one didn't get as much views or views. like as the yes. last one uh-uh. but for this one I'm like I just want to see uh, but it's so far so good uh, the American radio stations um, like KCRW which is a part of NPR uh, named it uh, the top songs uh-huh. uh, wow. one of the top song of the day for that time and they've been great supporters of my music so I'm really thankful for that um, it's to me, I'm really still, maybe I'm in the minority, but I still believe in quality over quantity. Yeah, wow. for so. sure. Yeah. Um, okay, Z, uh, speaking of pandemic, uh, you know how you mentioned earlier about pandemic and then, you know, about in the middle of you like, um, shooting the, vi- the music video and then pandemic came. So, and then now kita tengah MCO 2.0. What is the biggest impact this lockdown has on your life and career? I mean, you know, career... But like you know, just in your life in general. Oof, man. Um, <laughs> what hasn't it impacted? You know what I mean. Like I've. Uh, okay, let's let's. Um, I think I would love to as much as I would love to touch on the things that, um, you know where where things became an obstacle. Uh, mm. I think I just want to cut to the chase and talk about the silver lining. Mm. Um, I think more, of course, because, you know, we're humans, it's not natural for us to be cooped up inside. However, if you really take that opportunity, um, I also see a lot of people learning new skills um, and, you know, um, bettering their homes and stuff like that. Um, But for me, I took this as an opportunity to reconnect with my friends. Uh, mm-hmm. From all over the world, um, which yeah. I, you know, everybody's suddenly on the same time zone. But no, but no, yeah. <laughs> suddenly, semua macam eh, you ba- oh, you dah bangun, oh, you, oh, you still tak tidur macam okay. Now we're yeah, all. Yeah, I'm like it's three a.m. in the states. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> pandemic, you know. So like, all right, that's 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 FaceTime. The pandemic time zone we call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Standard MCO time. Standard MCO time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, you know, I, I've just taken the time also to connect with my friends um, and see how they're dealing with situations. Uh, it's really interesting to know that we're dealing with the same war. <laughs> That's true, uh-uh. so to speak. Um, common and war how can mean common war, right? And like how um, people are kind of like you know handling it in uh, different parts of the world. But I also personally, I've taken the time to um, really sort of reflect on the things that are just the basic necessities um, that in everyday life I've taken for granted. Hmm. Um, you know, really start to start to minimize your priorities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and really focus on what will happen. Like, what can I, what can I, cannot take to the grave? Oh, um, betul. You know, like, you learn yeah. about um, your principles in the past and then you're like, okay, maybe I can minus that principles. Yeah. Like, your betul. values start to get less uh-uh. but more less. important. Uh-uh. Um, and you oh, start to care a lot more about the people around you, about oh. their safety, yeah. you know. So there's always a sense of, like, 
ever since you know the whole pandemic happened, I also feel like people have started to tap into their sense of selflessness a little more. Where yep. it's like, guys, we need to work together to, mm-hmm. you know, like overcome all of this. Okay. Um, so you know. Um, yeah, and I've, I've also just been on social media a lot more. I don't know if that's a good thing, but... <laughs> no, I, think we, we've we've, all I think we've all been spending too much time on social media. Especially on Twitter. I love you, Twitter. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm like, Y'all give me life. life. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, just to put it out there, mungkin ada di kalangan audience kita yang tak tangkap uh, point tadi uh, Ziavi sudah tidak lagi bersama Bushfire Records so uh, Z is an independent artist so hmm. apa short term or long term plan for Ziavi untuk masa sekarang and untuk masa hadapan uh, so hopefully saya akan uh, terus um, you know menulis um, mereka um, hmm. dan you know continue to be karya uh, apa apa anak seni pengkarya anak seni penulis lirik mm-hmm. um, i do have plans for this year whether or not they're going to happen uh, remains to be unseen sebab mm-hmm. kita sekarang memang uncertain uh, kita plan macam mana pun kita tak tahu tak akan tahu. terjadi ke tak um, but i am also really excited to uh, i i just i just try venture into business um oh. Oh, that's interesting. What sort? Uh, yeah, I sort. I just don't want to say it. Okay, okay. So, don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. Uh, what else? But I'm collaborating with uh, some local brands. Actually, kalau kita tengok betul betul, kalau dekat Instagram tu kadang kadang usha usha lah barangan buatan lokal. Betul. Uh, actually, kita ada banyak barang buangan lokal yang berkualiti. Berkualiti. Hmm. Betul oh. betul. Sebab kita punya generation dulu, macam kalau um, apa kita belum kita masih dalam proses pembelajaran mm-hmm. tentang hal-hal especially for our generation the you know the millennials lah um, kita dah sebab kita grow up with the internet so kita mm-hmm. boleh belajar everything about dropship about Betul. macam mana nak start your own makeup line without yeah. any capital benda ah. macam tu so knowledge ni semua je ada dekat internet um, semua je kalau you tanya ke siapa-siapa ada je ada jalan accessible. semuanya accessible accessible so luckily for me um, I've been really keeping my eye out on uh, local products, mm. um, makeup, mm. uh, yang buat batik, mm. uh, buat kaftan, makanan, you know, semuanya. And especially during pandemic ni, semua orang try to ambil uh, apa aluran lain untuk yes. rezeki. So I try to be as supportive as I can. Um, even on my social media now, on Saturdays I open it for business uh, it's not paid it's not paid or anything i feature a mm. uh, malaysian product that i like called Very hashtag thoughtful. support support local saturday mm. um so i like doing that uh, i like supporting brands uh, especially local ones um but That's yeah sweet i of you. sorry so sweet of you to, to do that this <laughs> you know i gap think is like yeah i think so i think it's about time you know yeah. that we highlight uh, you know like what you're wearing also i Thank you for you noticing. Know? Yes, I love it. I love it. I have one in my closet as well. So uh, I don't know what to wear. So like, you know, mm. yeah. But other than that, I am also still, uh, you know, uh, before MCO, of course, I was going to the studio um, because oh. I'm trying to sk- kickstart my YouTube channel again. Uh, oh, I'm really nice. excited about this one. I'm doing covers. Um, oh yes. But covers in anti confirm about nostalgia. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> tak sabar Okay Tak sabar I, just, I akan jadi like The first The first yang aku tengok Macam Ooh, Betul <laughs> oh, You better do that Okay I got video <laughs> Jangan Sebab ada ramai witness tau ah, yeah, A lot is watching Okay Aini you, you jaga I have anything I cannot cover for you okay. It's on the <laughs> net <laughs> Sorry It will be all over My Instagram <laughs> Your TikTok, you will be on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you, I knew. Anyway, Z, so as a singer-songwriter, you're also known to play a few alter egos on your social media. <laughs> okay, I was trying my best to count how many characters you have, but I guess I have to try harder because I lost count. I lost count. 
I, I couldn't I couldn't uh, like recognize like ini sama ka with this this character because it's the, like the same but different names. So Z, how many do you actually have? Girl, I'll let you know when I know. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't even know. You still know. trying to figure that one out. Still so. trying to figure. They're you know they're still trying to like write me, write me. <laughs> <laughs> I need a whole another wig for you, but <laughs> but I will. Which is it's a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it's a pandemic. I'm eight right now, so take a chill pill, but, girl. Uh, <laughs> but there are there are new ones coming up, I assume. Okay, so to me, my characters is like I I you know I'm a writer first and foremost, um, mm-hmm. and I love writing characters. A lot of people say like, is it cosplay? But I'm like, I don't mm. know if it's the same thing as what like no, I do. I, I guess I don't, I don't feel like no, it's the same. No, so. you know, I just Not love then, I feel. creating uh, characters and their backstories. Yeah, like your TikTok um, videos. Yeah, especially <laughs> that that auntie is so much fun to play, but she scares me. She scares me when I play her. It's like, gonna kadang jam. Whoa, like, oh my gosh, I do not okay. want to sit with her. So scary. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time after I like every time after I, I I record the video as soon as I press stop I'm just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> what like oh my god that was so good and I'm like, scared I'm like, oh my god, like, is oh, that, that hot in here yeah. <laughs> that was intense like I like oh, never imagined I, yeah. could, I could bring that but back. it was like that's so scary how like natural it comes I'm like oh it's because of the years of experience I've had around mm. that aunties <laughs> You know what I mean? I I, I do. Yeah, the- I need. Do you? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Salam. different aunties. Yeah. Auntie, 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 macam macam lah. Well, the auntie is also everywhere, like in the Western culture. Like I also yeah. like, those aunties are like really like backhanded oh, like, oh. Yeah. comments. It's like I'm like I don't know what just happened, but I feel abused emotionally. <laughs> I feel attacked. I feel so attacked. Like, does she like me? Does she? She hates me. You know, like that. Is this one of the characters? <laughs> should, should be right. <laughs> uh, jokes aside, but um, uh, on, this, on a serious note, okay, uh, you've been in the ind- you've been in the industry for over 10 years. Um, so throughout your journey, what do you think was and still is lacking in our creative side? 10 years, huh? Time. Man, I'm only 22. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Don't we all wish we're still 22? Sorry, what was the question, darling? I mean, uh, we are still 22. <laughs> um, what was my question? Uh, throughout your your journey in the in the industry, uh, what do you think was and still is lacking? Ooh, this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> you know, I do have. Um, um, In the industry locally or just in general, you mean? Uh, locally, yeah, in, in, locally in the country now. We definitely, yeah, you know, I, I like how you angle this question because um, you know, oftentimes I'm asked to compare um, between oh, US okay. and, um, and I'm just like... Um, can, I cannot lack on here, we know. We can't lack on here, we know. We can't lack on here, we know. So, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you're very specific about your question because um, I've been learning a lot about... Um, what we lack um, and it's a long process to get to a progress <laughs> um, yep. unfortunately but I think like what ultimately what we lack is the education uh, of the music industry of the music business especially for up and coming artists um, I've spoken to up and coming artists and I'm like okay do you have publishers they're like what's that Like how much does your manager make, and they're like more than what should be. Yeah. Um, you, do you can you get lawyers? Are there? I'm like there are entertainment lawyers. There are you know specific like uh, you know accountants for the industry, and they're like really I didn't know that existed. So I think like you know we need to start educating, um, especially in my line. I'm talking about the music industry. Mm, yeah. um, I think we need to you know really start. Um, hunkering down on really informing um, musicians, but they also need to want the knowledge. 
because yeah, I also hear betul. like there are workshops available tapi datang 20 people 20 orang, orang je datang yeah. workshop free tau daripada daripada key leaders of the music industry tapi 20 wow. orang sahaja datang okay first and foremost music industry ni kita kena It's a lot of work. Bukan sekadar dekat atas stage sahaja. Bukan sekadar dalam social media sahaja. Bukan sekadar dalam recording studio sahaja. Kita kena tahu every single selok-belok dalam perjalanan bidang industri kita. Betul? Bidang slash industri lah, same thing, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so I feel like because for me, I'm talking from experience because I started when I was 23, just a baby. I didn't know Ooh. anything. Sign sahaja, sign je. Mm. You know, um, and I wish I would have known more about what I, you know, I wish I know what I know now back yeah. then. But it's not too late to learn that, especially kalau you baru start. Okay, Alang, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, kita tak cakap pasal publishing ke, kita tak cakap macam mana kita nak license lagu kita. It's more than just putting it on Spotify. Just because yeah. your music is on Spotify, tu lah you patut tahu pasal royalties, Royalty. ah, yeah. pasal mana duit tu All pergi, mana duit tu datang. Betul-betul. A lot. I dulu macam like, ah, oh, me and numbers are not friends. We're yeah. not even yeah. frenemies. You know, yeah, macam yeah. tu. Not my, tapi, not my problem. Ah, tapi sekarang ni macam like, you really have to face your fears. You really have to start being smarter about... Um, everything that you do and not just okay so someone told me something very very helpful that woke me up we check up 70% of the music industry is business only yes. 30% is creative yep. so that says a lot um, I think yeah I'm not gonna elaborate much on much else on what we lack but I'm just gonna hit it to the core point um, education of music business and industry is the utmost important. Yeah. Um, okay, Z, bercakap tentang industry music. Now that you know we, you have touched industry music kita. Uh, tadi, the previous question was on, you know, apa perbezaan, you know, what, what is lacking. Uh, so sekarang, apa pendapat Z, perbezaan music in indie scene? Kalau dibandingkan dulu dan sekarang. Oh, I love, I love everything that I, I memang dari dulu lah jiwa indie actually. Uh, I was just you know lucky enough for my songs to be out there. Yeah. Because kita underdog juga dulu, you know. Um, and so I have full support. I always support, support, support so much the indie scene. Um, yeah. but the indie scene then and the indie scene now yeah. so different. It's so different because there's more now, and yeah. it's like young young musicians, young artists. They're so talented. They're so talented, so brave, so mm. educated, so outspoken, and uh, very diverse as well. And it mm. makes me so excited. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I came back is because I was like, yes. You guys are doing something really amazing, and please let me know how I can support you. Yeah. You know, um, but I think that the people giving the funding should, um, you know, and also the media um, actually yeah. uh, should pay a lot, should give attention to the indie scene yeah. because they are really the ones who are the potential global exports, the next wave of global exports for Malaysian music. Betul? You know. Because everything I mean that you mentioned uh, funding twice now, which are because it is it's true, which are because you know our previous guest actually, which are bring this matter up, which are like she brought this matter up about you know funding, which are talent is everywhere. Kita ada banyak sangat talent talent you know merata rata. Cuma nya without funding without capital, macam mana dia nak memulakan perjalanan kerja mereka? Betul, that's why orang selalu tanya ay, Ziavi bila nak buat lagu lagi, bila nak buat album lagi, bila ada rezeki yang Betul. Betul lah, that's the, uh-uh. Because you got to pay your musicians, you got to pay for your studio, you got to pay yeah. macam-macam lah. Uh, and funding is very important. Um, kenapa K-pop industry booming? Sebab funding from government. Mm. Funding from Samsung. Mm-mm. Betul, private. Um, They have a read. Re- A very strong ni uh, support support system Sini. diorang. Support tu is also important. Okay, macam ni eh. 
Malaysia ni actually kecil Scene dia uh-uh. Everybody knows everyone Yes Which means that we have to work together Betul There's no room Competition ye lah Semua nak cari makan Betul. Tapi jangan makan belakang Ya yeah, betul. betul You know what I mean So yeah. Yes I feel I feel that You know You have to give chance Ah okay Another thing I nak cakap uh, Aside from funding eh, Funding Funding is very important lah Tanya-tanya kat banyak lah Yeah. Like people just need to give funding to the right people. Another mm-hmm. thing also, yeah, I notice a lot of the industry uh, people who call the shots. Uh, I pernah tanya di tanya dalam interview, apakah pandangan ZAV dengan orang dalam in the industry music orang dalam industry music yang lebih memandangkan rupa daripada bakat. Mm-hmm. And I was just questioning this to myself yeah. the other day. Why? 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 And I'm I'm just like so taken aback by yeah. this question because I'm just like, okay, um, wow. Um, I want to say it's like not a part of my vocabulary, but you know, yeah. um, I said I'm sorry, but I tak pernah pandang rupa. For me personally, I am a bakat person. You know, yeah. I pandang bakat more than rupa because mm-hmm. bakat tak pandang. I cakap because bakat tak pandang rupa. Betul. Betul. You know, yes, so I think that we need to give that a rest. Mm. We have to stop seeing the background story. Mm-hmm. We have to stigma stop seeing stigma, stigma, the, the, uh, the, 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 the stigma, their beliefs, who yes. they are as people, and really look at their gift. Mm-mm. I'm telling you, if we start doing that, if we start seeing people yang maybe not the package now. What is the package anyway? Siapa yang setkan the package ni? Betul tak? Betul. Betul. And hello, sorry, but you know some of the best uh, artists tak ada numbers uh, pun dekat Instagram three digits je. Tapi yeah. that doesn't mean that dia orang punya art made tak masterpiece semuanya. Mm, so we have to stop like macam we have to start lah. not stop we have to start you know looking beyond the surface and really start listening with our ears and our hearts. Um, because I think once we start doing that, we Malaysia will know for a fact that kita ada abundant of talents. My my last question before um, before we let you go, but uh, do you think there is still hope in our country in the, in the creative industry? Of course, one hundred percent. Because you do have the younger generations now who are um, really you know um, up to to say. Uh, in, Uh, uh, ni apa upcoming no no yang memang apa betul betul ni uh, apa ya dia op- nak dia upkan dia smarts uh, uh, okay ya yeah, no ya yeah, ikhlas yang memang betul betul nak you know yang ada talent yang betul betul I get what you mean ya yeah, tak tahu ayat tu apa what's that well mean? I feel like the younger generation now they have access to anything that they want to ask because of the internet yeah. okay some now I don't want to, of course, I don't want to devalidate. Um, there are also very, very talented people who live in areas where they don't have internet. Mm. Uh, yang tu lagi kita belum belum tap into. Betul. Especially in Sabah and Sarawak. Yes. People yes, know so this for a fact. Like you know, without. I'm getting told a lot. Like there's so much untapped talent in Borneo. Yeah. I'm like. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> you know. Like, so, yeah, so, so uh, now I'm, what? Yeah, I'm telling you. Ah, kita dah lama dah tahu. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like, but you know, thankful right now. People are starting to really listen to us because they do start to discover yeah. a lot yeah. of talents. You know, to me, much I'm like, okay, two talents that kita tahu that we can see on SoundCloud, that we can see on Instagram, that we can see on social media. But what about the ones who are still like just every petang main guitar with their family? You know, yeah. they don't do they don't go on their devices. You know, still just inspirasi is the angin and yeah. the embones. You know, <laughs> much and like I want to know. Where they are, you know. Like hopefully, one day, once the pandemic is over, yeah. I would love to go and and know more about that. Explore, you know, yeah. like yeah. the poets, the real poets, like that. So, yes, I believe there is still a lot of hope 
it's just that right now of course like the pandemic's not helping um with the progress for us to really start heading in that direction yeah. um mm-hmm. but to me maybe maybe i'm you know I'm biased because I am a hopeful person. I'm quite an idealist, which is sometimes I don't know if that's a good thing, but <laughs> um, you know, I I do believe in hope. It's what keeps me going. Uh, you can hear it in my songs. Um, you know, it's like sometimes bad things happen, but you just got to remain hopeful about it. Um, it's not that bad actually. It's not terrible. Um, we just have to, to get it to a way, point yeah. where everybody is happy yeah. um, and where everybody feels like they're treated equally. Doesn't matter if you are local or international. Kalau ada kat show tu, everybody gets treated equally. Yeah. You know, macam, okay, let's say Indonesia. Kenapa diorang punya industry is so hard for Malaysian artists to protrude into? Sebab dia memang... Sebab dia orang memang appreciate dia orang punya oh, homegrown yeah. talents. Yeah. Okay, di Indonesia, I have friends in the industry. Kalau you dengar lagu, macam, lagu ni keren banget sih siapa ini? Macam, oh ini penulisnya adalah bla bla bla. Dia orang pandang penulis. Oh. They see, it's like when you go into a restaurant, they're the type of people who ask, who's the chef, not who's the owner. So appreciation yeah. to lain. Yeah, whereas the kat Malaysia dia terbalik. Kalau yeah. kita pas kali masuk ada kan? juga lah the people who you know <laughs> who are in the uh, ada lah. Ah uh, macam oh lagu you know like you, you, the appreciation ada but appreciation lain lah. So I have yeah again like I have um, an absolute hope uh, but you just need you just need to gather everybody. Oh my. The, like a union maybe i don't know mm-hmm. oh my god that is what the show is all about to gather all the creative people boom the yeah. gather mm-hmm. everybody listen to what they have to say number one listen under one roof everything that you would have to say they complain ka? yes because they're frustrated for so long because yeah. yeah. nobody was listening to them and now you listen not everyone is there to ask for money but uh, they just want change. Yeah. They just want what's right for them. They just want to know what is their rights. What Betul. is your right yeah. over them? Betul. How we can work together? Like unity. Again, it's something that we've always been taught to practice. But we fail to practice. Now we must start practicing it. Yes. Speaking you know. of change, Z, we actually have someone to introduce you. This is Joanna. We just spoke to her earlier. Joanna is fighting for the creative industry and she has yeah. a question for you. Oh, hi! <laughs> Surprise! Yes! <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> hi, Joanna. How are you? I'm good, good. Thanks. Oh, my God! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Oh my god, I used to like, you know, watch you on YouTube before. I'm like, oh my god, you know, it's so cool yeah. to be like with you. Uh, <laughs> today. Very nice to meet you. I like what, uh, is that a baju kurong you're wearing? Eh, no, it's not. It's, a, it's actually a, a baju kurong. Yes, uh, a- looks like baju kurong. Baju kurong uh, hot topic right now, so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hot topic. <laughs> anyway, Joy yes. has a question for you. So Z, you know, I was um, actually following all your conversation for this, of course, you know, behind the scene, and I, I really am, um, you know, uh, I, I've actually, you know, talked about this uh, prior to you know, this session, that you know, there's so many loopholes in the creative industry here in Malaysia. I mean, I myself, I was in the, I was a singer before, before lah. Sekarang tidak sudah. What's this? You're, you're still a singer. Well, I mean, you know, not actively. Singing. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that easy to get rid of music once it chooses you. <laughs> yeah. So I think you know, I there's so many you know uh, points that I really like, and but I think you know, for us in Malaysia to move forward is that we need to acknowledge and start appreciating you know our singers, our talents, cre- creative industry as a whole. You know because. Being a singer myself, I know how hard it is to do a song, you know? I mean, like, for example, uh, you know, like performing arts and, and, and in fact, all the singers performing on stage. A five minutes performance, you don't know 
you know how much of hard work and effort they have put you know to 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 make a, a, a an extraordinary performance so Same. yeah so so you know i think everyone should start acknowledging and appreciate talents and i like the fact when you say that you know what is package you know like <laughs> <laughs> why do you need to stereotype like oh just because you have to be on television you need to have yeah. the package no 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 you know kulit yeah, putih dari licin gigi lurus putih itu number one Malaysia punya ni yeah I mean like you know this is something that you know I think we have to move um, from this from this you know uh, idea of you know in the creative industry in the music industry and Z if I you know and privilege maybe next time you know uh, to represent the creative talents um, what do you want me to say so oh first of all we would we would gladly nominate you to be our <laughs> voice <laughs> well um i think um my answers are in your points um first of all we have to start looking past the exterior okay. secondly we have to really really if you are working in let's say a field um or a ministry or a company a brand whatever if you are representing that and if you are a, the one who is able to call the shots to change someone's life just by giving them some pocket change then you should really dig in deep and know the rest of the voices that you don't see on tv that you don't see on the radio that you don't read about in the papers because some of them rely on music only yes. to put food on their table it's true so i want to know if that fairness is able to be given to them. Mm -hmm. I have friends in the industry yeah. who cannot afford their necessity, their daily expenses because their checks got smaller. Oh. And that pains me. Um, also, yes, you have to support local cow cow. Like, why isn't the radio playing more local stuff? Why is it only on Sunday 4 to 5 p.m.? Why? Yeah, yeah. Why, you know, I, I like, cool, this is a cool Katy Perry song that I've heard five times now. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? And like, are we supposed to just be reliant on social media? And that's why, like, you know, yes, that's where people are more focused to. YouTube is the new TV. Mm. Um, but also, if you want to ask for funding, why do we have to rack our brains in order to know how to sign in the forms? Betul. Yeah. Betul. Why do we need a mentor to teach us how to sign in the forms? Um, okay, sorry, I'm just like really airing out my frustrations. Um, um, I'm not so much frustrated. I'm, you know, I, I just really want to see progress and betterment happen. Um, because it's been a long going conversation um, and you know it, you, 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 you get a little you, you feel a little bit defeated when you know the people who you, who you respect and who are strong and who are the voices come back and say there's nothing we can do yeah, yeah. that really pains me because okay I know my place I'm a songwriter okay I'm a songwriter all I can do is feel all I can do is feel for my peers, feel for my colleagues. Um, and also, we need to start normalizing contracts. Yeah. Before we deliver your work. Yeah. Because we as talents, have, we also have our terms and conditions. That's true. Right, right. And contracts are good. It protects you, it protects me. We have to start uh, appointing people who can give um, legal advice pro bono hmm. to musicians who cannot afford yeah. legal help. So, 
I think from my part, from my experience, I think um, that's all I have to say. But I'm, um, you know, I I I know plenty more uh, people whom you should definitely speak to because they're, you know, I've only been back. I, it's there's only so much I can say. It won't be fair for me to say more because my friends have been here and they've stuck it out. They've really had to endure so many challenges and hurdles along the way. I, it won't be right for me to speak for them. Um, but I just feel like the conversation should be very much more open to the rest of the musicians, especially also the, we're forgetting musicians who have to work in the pub. Betul. They have to go out every night, yeah, every sing night. songs. Yeah. Like who's taking care of them? You know, they have kids, mm-hmm. and this is their livelihood. They have to go out every night and sing like four hours. How many sets? Mm. But MCO now, much amane? Yeah. So you know it's yes like during the time of MCO it's great to have like funding relief, but is it just going to be this one time? Yeah. You know in the in, because like much of musicians, you know we don't have so some of us don't have like if it's freelance some of us don't have pension plans. Yeah. Financial plannings, you know. Mm. Insurance pun belum tentu lagi. And we are people too. This is our livelihood as well. Just because kita seni, you know. Just because it's like a creative um, avenue, like doesn't mean that we're not contributing. We are Betul? the best that we can in ways that we know only we, we only know how. Yeah, you know that this doesn't mean like we you should devalidate what our needs are. Yeah, you know, and I I say our because um, I, I you know my friends aren't here to speak, um, but this is what they tell me. Um, I had a good cry about it when I found out certain things and um, how unfair it must have been for all these years. So, yeah, I do hope that, Joanna, um, that you can maybe open up the conversation to a wider net yeah. um, and ask people of like different scenes because the music industry is very, very big. Exactly. Um, there's different subcultures as well um, that they maybe have like a different point of view than I do. But right. yeah, thank you so much for listening and uh, allowing me to share. Yeah. Right, but, um, before we let you go, I was hoping if you can do a little performance, a little. Okay. <laughs> nani, nani. <laughs> <laughs> Let's gotta woosa, gotta woosa it out, ladies. <laughs> yeah, but that was good. That was good. Uh, yeah. Any, uh, but okay. Sorry. Is it time? It's time. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, let me tune. Oh, one more thing, Joanna. Yes. Before we start thinking about sending our artists internationally, we got to clean up our house first. <laughs> got it. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dust under the carpets. <laughs> oh. Yep. <laughs> so this song is called Good Things Come to Those Who Wait. Um... Good things can also sometimes run its course. But we just have to understand the meaning of impermanence. Good things come to those who wait. Don't believe that it's too late. Love will conquer those who hate. Good things come to those who wait. When you're stuck out on the road And you've got nowhere to go The crooked path will soon be straight Good things come to those who wait When the moment comes too late And the cold wind makes you shake You'll see a moment of come to those who wait good things come to those who wait 
I legit crying. <laughs> like that. Yo, no, what the hell? Is- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Special performance for the Unity show. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, we didn't intend this to be a very uh, deep um, interview, I <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I, I really like. I not like. I I love your song. Good things. It's just um um. Okay, maybe this is for another episode, lah. <laughs> another episode, lah. Anyway, uh, okay. Yeah, you give me one second. Uh, <laughs> Elaine, <laughs> industry gives you, you know, you express your emotion. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. It's just uh, um, with it's di- divine timing, it was uh, the right time for me to explore good things at the you know with whatever that is happening so it just it was a good reminder to just pause and yeah your your song f- flow it You're just went through sister. me and like you know i'm glad so, i'm glad yeah i'm pretty sure there there are a lot of uh, elaine's you know crying whilst listening to your song so <laughs> it it truly really meant it meant a lot when you sang that <laughs> i um, loki was trying not to cry I know I could hear I think we could hear your (laughs) good guy (laughs) because you know the the thing the great thing about like songs is that um for me personally like when I perform like let's say if I perform Honeybee um my song Honeybee from my first album for example like um it means it starts to mean different things at different phases of your life as well Mm -hmm. um but yeah I just really appreciate this time um with um you ladies um you you know it's it's it, uh, to me you know a good interview is where it it, it feels like you're just having a conversation with yeah, friends so yeah, chat. um true. yeah and when joanna came in as well like that's it i, I just bare naked you know like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know so like you know i really appreciated that as well like you know because i feel um, as a person, um, you know, in, in the industry as well, I don't ever want to be somebody who doesn't use a platform to say something. Um, but of course, I will say something when it's spoken about to me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate that, Joanna, for, you know, allowing the space and for you, Aini, Elaine as well, for doing this amazing thing that you're doing. Um, I know my answers are very long-winded. Uh, I don't know how long your show is, but <laughs> it's going to be much longer. It's okay. Yeah. I don't mind whatever you want to cut out, put in. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, okay. But yeah, um, I just feel like the Unity show, like just in the title itself, is very important for us to be reminded of right now because it's very, very crucial. Um, not only in our daily life, no, actually, <laughs> yes more importantly in our daily lives right now because we need each other to keep safe that's true we need each other to do the same thing to keep safe um and we need each other to practice it in order for us to gain you know like really be reminded that malaysia is truly a multiracial country yeah. like you've embedded that in, in us when we were in school yeah, betul. Betul. so Practice it, please. Practice, yeah, betul. Please show us. Always like, remind our audience. Sebelum kita start the show, we always, always talk about unity, unity, unity. Yeah. About, you know, about, you know, kita, kita, about diri kita. You know, kita bukan, kita bukan satu, satu bangsa. Kita, satu, kita banyak, banyak-banyak bangsa. Jadi, kita, we have to unite. Betul tu. Yeah. We have to unite. Not divide. Yes. Betul. The um, it's so nice to have you on the show. Unfortunately, masa tidak mengizinkan. Terima kasih kerana meluangkan masa untuk hadir ke Unity Show pada malam ini. We hope to see more of the RV and your music in the new future. Yeah. Thank you also, Joe, for yeah, coming on the show. Thank you both of you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Z. Thank you, Joe. Stay safe, and we'll speak soon. Yeah. Thank you. I need how inspiring with those segments. I've never cried like that on a show, let alone the whole nation saw me crying lah. Yeah. It really shows what this platform is all about, right? 
Elaine paling beri yang menangis. I titiskan air mata je lah. Elaine just sok 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 sok. I just okay. like, I know. Go. Release. Menangis But lepas uh, orang. <laughs> the Unity Show is a platform for all creative people in Malaysia to unite as one. Unity is stronger than division. So why divide each other regardless of political ideology, race or religion? Mm-hmm. It doesn't take professionals to build a nation. We built this nation together. Please reach out to us at hope at theunityshow.com. We want you to be yourself. We want you to showcase your talent. Let it be singing, acting, painting. Ada a few alter ego macam Z Ali <laughs> nak showcase tu pun boleh juga. We want the entire nation to know you. But please, please let us know what you want us to cover on our future episodes. Itu sangat membantu ya rakan-rakan sekalian. So jangan lupa ordinary people like us can still achieve extraordinary things for our country when we rise as one. Never lose hope. Keep the, Keep faith. the faith. Spread the faith. the faith. Let's join hands and build a better, a better land. land. Kepada penonton-penonton terima kasih kerana sudi bersama dengan kami sekali lagi malam ni. Jangan lupa saksikan episod yang seterusnya setiap hari Rabu jam 9 malam here on the Unity Show. We'll catch you next week. Good night. Selamat malam! <laughs>